money service. And I couldn't get the song that I wanted in my mind today, but we're going to do my favorite standard song. <laughs> but it's fitting everywhere. <laughs> this little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. All in my home. And I'm going to let it shine all in my home. And I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. You know what? I forgot to put my robe on. We're going to roll on. <laughs> I forgot to put my robe on. <laughs> we're going to roll on today. <laughs> I'm glad it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, for our scripture reading. Yeah, Psalm 95, a call to worship and obedience. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Amen. 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 Let us pray. This morning, our Heavenly Father, we again thank you because you allowed us to come and assemble ourselves out to the house of prayer. Father, we have a lot to say thank you for because your goodness outnumbers our the trials and the tribulations we may be experiencing. And we experience trials and tribulations because we're living in a sinful world. It is fallen. But cause of your grace and mercy surrounds us daily. And we are still here and we are blessed. And for that, we say thank you. Then, Father, uh, we just thank you for each and every one of us who was on this line, who were listening through LinkedIn or Facebook, and who will listen later. Father, we just thank you for them. And then I thank you for allow using me as your vessel to proclaim the truth of your word because this is a mission field is great that so many needs to hear the word of the Lord. And I thank you for using me as that vessel. And Father, let's continue to bless this church as we carry on in your name. And I pray this prayer and thanksgiving in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good morning. The reading of the church covenant. Good morning. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the father and the son and of the Holy Ghost. We do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to work together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of the church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, 
to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements and exemplary in our deportments, to avoid all tattletelling, backbiting and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we carry out the spirit of the covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen, 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 and amen. Thank you, thank you. I'm having to take a deep breath, a sigh of relief. Uh, I have a somewhat heavy heart this morning, but we'll come to the hour in our worship uh, where we come for the hour of prayer. And scripture says, that is, if there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church and let them go in prayer. And we have so many on our prayer list uh, that is sick, some are in the hospital, and then there's so many uh, in, still in bereavement for the loss of a loved one. And just because the body has been committed to the, back to the earth from whence it came, it doesn't mean that the grieving is over. That many times the grieving just begin because reality sets in. I can't go and touch that person anymore. I can't go and put my hands or look upon that face anymore. That's when reality sets in that they are gone, but I'm here to remind you they are not forgotten. And in being in Christ, they're in the presence of the Lord. And therefore, we come with humble hearts to pray for the sick among us. And we have so much to pray for. We have oppression. We have wars raging, people being killed and maimed, and for so many reasons, or so uh, I say no good reason. And we've taken lives, lives are being lost for senselessness, uh, or evil and hatred, because we have moved God out of our lives and in walks Satan. And we know he come to kill, destroy, and to destroy whatever he came. But we hold to the fact that he's not more powerful than God. God is all powerful. And if, it were, if I were to take the survey, every one of us could tell us, could say of God's power of deliverance, comfort, healing, and his leadership. So we're coming today with humble hearts as we go before the throne of God's throne of grace. I forgot to ask if there, anybody has a special request. I have some that was given me from last week. I have them on here. I didn't forget them. And I don't forget them when I'm in prayer every night because prayer is needed. So let us pray. Dear kind, gracious heavenly father, Father, I'm coming to your throne of grace. I'm coming with a humble heart 
a bow down head. Sometimes the mind gets a little weary, but then I remember that I have to give it to you and seek comfort in you. Father, I'm coming lifting up the ones uh, that's before me. Um, Mr. Price, Ms. Woods, uh, Mr. Stewart's daughter, Brother Tyler, Sister Wells, Brother Bloomfield, Sister Carter, Sister Harrington, uh, Sister Martin, Sister Holloway, Reverend Montgomery, and for uh, Father, these are all the names that I have, but we all need your healing touch. We need for I'm asking for you to heal as we know you can, because you are the doctor with the perfect medicine. And you will administer as we know that you will. And we're asking for healing for those not only the ones of the names that are called, but the ones that I do not know. But Father, you being all known, you know them all. You know their condition and you know the extent of their condition. There was a name that has really been bothered me. This is a close friend of Sister Guidance Williams. And you allowed me to, to speak to her yesterday. And Father, she's your child, just as all of the rest of us are, and all of the sick ones. And we're asking for healing this morning. And Father, there's so many that is still in bereavement from the loss of a loved one. This Mercy Servo, the Wallace family, the Rankin, the Bly, the Hale, the Davis, the White family, the Lewis, Bracey, and the church itself, the Salem Baptist Church. Father, I've been there, as you know, I have, from Lewis and the pastor. We mourned a long time. And there's the Teasley family, the Brown family. Yes. Father, we just need your touch this morning. Father, we know that you came. And we are believing with every ounce of our being that you will because Number one, you are prayer hearing and answering God. You are a loving and compassionate God. And you promise that you will be with us even when we are going through these dark valley days. You told us not to fear because your rod and your staff is there to comfort us. And Father, we are holding on to that promise because there is no failure in you. And if you said it, it is going to come to pass. And we're just believing for your confident touch. And Father, we are asking for your protection around our babies, our lost babies, our babies that is just being injured and killed for no reason. Father, our babies are your gifts to us. Father, touch these parents' hearts that they will become better parents, they will become loving parents. And before they hurt and kill their own, they do something different. They seek you and say, Lord, have mercy. Because we know that mercy suits every case. You have given your mercy so many times and you do it time and time again. And Father, I, I'm just asking and pleading with you in faith to protect our babies. We have so many that's being abducted. We have so many that's lost and can't be found. And I'm just asking you to cover them with a blanket of your grace this morning. Father, we have the ones of our sisters and brothers that's being persecuted for our faith in you. Father, here again, you are our protector. You are the almighty God. And we are really calling on you, not that we doesn't any other time, to Father just protect, lead in God. Father, we're just calling on you. And Father, we, we are asking 
for our sisters and brothers and and this war-torn country of Ukraine. Father, I look at how people are being killed, babies are being killed, innocent people being, and my heart just bleeds for them. Father, I just thank you for your hand of protection and deliverance and giving them the victory. And Father, for the evilness that's going on and the greed that's going on, and not only in this country, but around the world, Father, you fix it because only you can fix it because you're the one who will change hearts. You are the one who will touch hearts. The Father, give us the faithful to stand firm and our faith in you and see the salvation of you. Because this fight, this fight that we are encountering is not a fight against us. It's a fight against good and evil. And with Father, we know that we, you are good and good is going to win all the time. And Father, I ask you to just touch the hearts of our leaders, give them the mind of Christ and let them lead not only this country, this in whatever nation or wherever they are, as you lead them, let them turn to you for leadership and direction. Not as man would do it because man ways are so much different from your ways. Father, we just need you right now. We need a healing from not just this nation, but our world because we are in chaos like never before. And Father, we believe you for your promise to said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven. You will quit to forgive and you will heal this land. And Father, I'm just asking, and I don't mean to sound repetitive, that you will touch the hearts and minds of men. Wherever there's evil, remove it and put love, compassion in the hearts of man. And we will, there will be a spiritual revival, a spiritual reawakening as never before. Father, because when you move, there's healing in your touch, there's comfort in your touch, there's love in your touch, and there's deliverance in your touch. And Father, I just ask you to just let us, me and the rest of the congregation, and all who are listening, down in the deep secret of your love, just speak through me, Father, as I try and encourage all of us to stay strong and faith, because in you, victory is assured. Father, I thank you in advance for answering this prayer as I'm praying it in the authoritative name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, this morning we're going to talk about let God Fight your battle. Let God fight your battle. And I'm coming out of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, and I'll read verses 17 through 25. And it reads as follows You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O, Jeruz o Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of Koshite and the children of Korite stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me. O Judah, 
and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so ye shall be established. Believe his prophets, so ye shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and they that, that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set up a, 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 a abusement against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Shur, and when which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon, Moab, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sur, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Sur, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead, but there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them an abundance of both riches with the dead, with the dead bodies, and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Let God fight your battle. And my focus this morning is on verse 17. Ye shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Then I picked up the other focus is verse 20. And when they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Pekakor, they went forth. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said to them, Hear, O Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe the Lord your God, and you shall be established, and you shall prosper. Meaning that you were gone, they were going to be successful. And I'm, the Lord gave me this uh, message because to try and bring encouragement to the congregation as we are facing our own giants and bullies even some may refer to them as us being on a treadmill of trials and tribulation because of the world in which we live in. There is one calamity after another, but our purpose today is to encourage us to know really who the fight is between, is between God and Satan. And if we stand still and stand on the promises of God, he will fight your battles. And we have many references in scripture where when God spoke to the people, his people, and said, I want you to do this, the battle is already won. Our battle is already won. So if I can just kind of give you a little background of what is happening here, that there was a war going on, or getting ready to take place, those evilness, the Moabites is coming and Ammon's gonna come against the nation of Judah and Jerusalem. Those was God chosen people. And now that they thought they, they was uh, helpless, uh, they was a big army and it's really kind of happened to what's happening, we see happening today over in Ukraine. But if we can subtitle this message it or this, of this chapter is that Moab and Ammon defeated and they were defeated because God was on the side of his people 
when he told the children of Israel, listen, I want you to just stand still. This fight is not yours. This is my fight. I will win the big battle for you, but I want you to be bold enough to go on out and faith in me, trusting in me, knowing that I have gone ahead of you to fight your battle. He took the two nations that was coming or gonna come against the nation of Jerusalem and Judah, turned them after they had slew this other nation to turn against one another and begin to fight and they kill one another. So what does that say? God is more powerful than any enemy we are going to come against. So when we take God and follow his direction, believing in his power, because he does not have some power, he has all power. And he will defeat his enemy. But now I want you to, I want us to take a look at that, that the leader, the hope of that. And the power of prayer. He went to God in prayer and called on him in faith. He began to fast and pray. And God gave him an answer. He gave him the reassurance that he needed to go on. But I want you to not to raise a hand. And, and from the scripture text that I read, they did not have to raise a hand. When they got to the battleground, the folk was already dead. So what does that say for you and I? When we give our battles to God, we do not have to do but one thing, and that's trust in him and his power. Have faith in him and his power. When we go to God and pray, knowing that there is power in prayer, and we exercise our faith, and he said, I want you to just go on out there. We go knowing with our unwavering faith that God is with us, and if he said go, the victory is ours. We do not have to do anything but to battle with our own faith failure. Okay, if when we stand fast and exercise the faith at Jehoshaphat and the nation of Judah and Jerusalem did, guess what? They was victorious each time. And let me say this, let me just remind you of uh, the power of prayer. We see from scripture that when Paul and Silas were thrown in jail, for preaching Christ, they didn't go into uh, a spirit of dismay or to, to have a defeated attitude. They went and had them a prayer and praise party and let God deliver them, using an earthquake to deliver them out of that prison jail. And when Peter was thrown in jail for preaching Christ, Peter laid down and went to sleep. The church went in prayer. The point that I'm trying to make is there's power in prayer. And when we believe God, we will be victorious every time. The church went in prayer. God sent an angel to wake Peter up out of his dead sleep. and said, come on and let's go. You have been delivered. And I'm telling you, and I will use this phrase, I declare you to trust God in every situation. He is our deliverer. There is no failure in him. We will be victorious in every step of the way. Every battle that we try and fight is not ours. And when we can recognize that it's not ours, this is not my fight. This is God's fight. I'm going to give it to him. Because he asked us to cast all of our cares and our burdens on him. When we take it and give it to God, we have put it in the hands 
of the man who have never, ever lost a battle. And when we put it in the, when we sickness, put it in the hands of the doctor who has never lost a patient. Yes, we can say we are praying for healing and God heals, but it's sometimes his healing comes on the other side of the joy. Did he answer our prayer? Yes, he did. And I can tell you from personal experiences that I have witnessed the person that we were praying for be healed for maybe a week or two weeks, but they God took them on home. That was telling us, I heard your prayer. You wanted them healed on this side of the joy. I've done that. Now I'm taking them home with me. Give them that complete healing on the other side of the joy. God hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. He fights our battles every single day because we are in a fallen world. And if it's a battle, it's nothing more than evil or hateful thoughts that comes in our mind. We are in a battle against Satan every day because he does not want God's people to keep walking in faith with him. He give us those negative thoughts. He give us those thoughts of fearfulness or, or a defeated attitude. That is not what God wants us to do. God tells us in Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, fear not, fear not. Don't be afraid of nothing or no one. Because just as I have you in the palm of my hand, I have them too. And if they're wrong, they're going to be punched. I am a loving God, but certainly I will punish wrongdoings that have always been God's stance. It will always be God's stance. And what we can do is to stand firmly on God's word. He also tells us, that I don't even want you to become discouraged because the battle that you are fighting seems unwinnable. Remember who is your mighty warrior? Who is the general in this war? Who is the general in this arm? I am. I know the strategy that I'm going to deploy. Just follow my instructions. I am the general. You don't have to do anything but trust me and follow me. I don't want you to become fearful. I want you to be that brave warrior soldier. Because I want you to remember this. My son, Jesus Christ, have defeated everything on the cross. And when he got up on Sunday morning, he didn't get up with just a little bit of power or limited power, but all power. And that means whatever you are going to encounter is already done. Christ told us in Matthew 16, 33. I, I don't know what you're worrying for, and I'm paraphrasing. I don't know what you're crying for. I don't know what you're fretting for. But do not be dismayed, because I have already overcome the world. He knew that we were going to encounter different situations. But he set us, he equipped us But everything we need, let me just remind you how God is us. Let me just remind you of what, how that God had dressed us for battle. No, he gave us his truth and that's the truth that we have to stand on. And it's, it is our buckler. Then he gave us his righteousness as our breath plate. We have Christ's righteousness in us. 
He gave us that. And him being a God of peace, he gave us shoes of peace as we are traveling, spreading the word. We are coming as peace. We are coming as peace, in peace, in peace, not as peace, but in peace. We are ready to share the word with all of the bullies that we are going to come against. Then he gave us, he shielded us with faith. And that's what we have to stand on, have faith in him and his word. Because with his faith, that it will deflect all of the fiery dots that Satan going to throw at us. Okay. Then what? He gave us the helmet of salvation. What is it? We have been free from all of the bondage of sin and evil. And I'll go back to what I just said, because Christ has won the victory over everything we are going to come against. And we are victorious in our endeavor. We are, in, we are victorious in this life. Because we are walking a faith walk, believing in God, knowing that we, God has wrapped us with his grace and his mercy. Whatever situation that we encounter, God's grace is what? Is sufficient. And his mercy does what? It suits every case. Whatever it is, his mercy suits the case. He is a merciful God, and his mercy has no end to it. It does not have a time stamp on it. And when we walk with God, we are victorious. Let me give you an example of one person that who came against his giant. And the world looked at it as him being defeated, but he didn't. And I'm talking about David and Goliath. David went up against a giant, Goliath, who had killed so many, but David took his rocks three and went up against the giant, the light. He went in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Whose head got cut off, David or the Goliath? And my point I wanna make here is this. When you go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you will to slay your giants because God has already told us the victory is his, and we in him is victorious. Yeah, we have giants in our life, but you know what? They are not giants in God's eyes. We are the giant because we are walking with Christ. And every obstacle that we come against, we have already won the battle. We have to believe it and do like the characters in our lesson, Jehoshaphat and his group. When he prayed, he made preparation. He anointed and appointed some singers and they went on out to begin to sing and praise. So what am I saying to you tonight today? When we pray about a situation, go on and start praising God for the victory. It reminds me of this song that when you don't have any food, when you pray and ask God, go on and set your plate, get your knife, put your fork, set your glass on, because God is going to deliver us. He will deliver you. He is the same God today as he was back in the writing of this lesson, this lesson and, and he just will be the same God tomorrow. What am I saying? We serve an unchangeable, all-powerful God. And all we need to do 
is to just trust in his word. And I used to hear my mother say, God is no shorter than his word. If he said it, that settles it. And whatever he said, his word will never come back to him for. It will accomplish what he meant for it to accomplish. Just as he won the victory for Jehoshaphat, Judah and Jerusalem, he will run, he will win the fight for you and I today. Give it to him and just stand still. And rejoice in the victory over your enemies. And I'm almost finished. When we take the fight to Satan, using our offensive weapon, the sword, which is the word of God, Satan has no defense against God's word. Remember, when Satan tempted Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry, out in the wilderness, he tempted him three times. And each time, Jesus told him, he gave him the word. And Satan had to leave him for a moment. But he came back. And each time, Christ used the word. So what am I saying to you? Satan has no defense when we are in Christ and standing on the word of God. There is victory. We have the victory. And I'm going to close with this song. When we're in our battles, keep praying, keep believing in our prayers and prepare to take our victory march singing this song, Victory is Mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine today. Then we can say joy is mine. And they can say this, I told Satan, to get thee behind me, because victory today is mine. Believers, we have victory. We have peace and joy. Those are assured of us when God fights our battles. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you as we prepare to, to partake in communion. Father, I just thank you for being our mighty warrior because you have won the victory and you won it on Calvary. And every war, a battle that we come against, our encounter, we are victorious in you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Today is our first one. Let us get bread prepared for communion. Hopefully we have our bread and our wine and our, or our water. Uh, we don't have our communion dishes or condiments. A uh, piece of bread or cracker is sufficient as we are getting ready to partake of the Lord's Supper. And we are doing so in remembrance of Christ and what he done for us on the cross. And let's say this. And as Christ and his disciples was eating their last meal together, he took the bread. He, break, he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take hey, Eat, this is my body, and they did eat. Right? And at the same manner, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And they did drink. But he said to them, I will not drink forth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's house. And as I said earlier, he told them that as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. 
So we're going to open the door to the church today. I inviting you to come and join this branch of Zion. You can join by letter, by Christian experience, or a candidate for baptism. Now, being that we are online, if you want to join, you go to our website, theshepherdministries.org. Click the membership tab. There will be a form, the membership application. Send it over and we'll make the announcement and present you to the church the next on the next Sunday. I'll say this. We thank you for coming. There is many yet to be saved. And we have the job to do to keep witnessing Christ. And I want to thank you for your presence today. We're going to do our closing song. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Oh.